Yes, I totally get what you're saying, Sam, because I used to struggle with this too. There's two different resurrections, but don't don't make resurrection and judgment synonymous. Okay? Judgment is when everybody gets to face the Lord and we get to find out about books. Our names will be written in the book of life. You see that? And we will already have been ruling and reigning with his son, Christ Jesus, for a thousand years. Can you imagine the gut ache? I mean, it's bad enough being in that place already with the gnashing of teeth, right? And and that Jesus described it as, what was it, the, um, what was that phrase? Oh, what? I have a hard time remembering that. Jesus said it all the time. It was something, something, and gnashing of teeth. But anyway, they're already in great torture. They're already, their memories haven't been wiped out. You know what they're thinking right now, this very moment down there? Conscien conscious existence? Why didn't I listen to my mom? Why didn't I listen to my friend who struggled with me? Why I, you know, th th and this is forever and ever and ever, and yet they still have to face God and know that something much greater is coming. Worse. Oh, forever and ever. Stop and think about that a second. Right? Forever and ever, and it never ends. It never ends. Oh, my God. <laughs> that just blows my mind. So blows the people that are dead now, that aren't believers are there. That's right, in shale Hades. Yes. So when does depart from me, I never knew you? You got that. It's going to be right there, judgment. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 What, what was that middle place again? I forget. Where the two lines are in the middle of that circle. That tells you. Okay, that was from what Jesus told us about the story in, I believe it is in Luke, of uh -huh. Lazarus and the rich man. Oh, okay. And that's when there was a great chasm, and the rich man was over here and said, send Lazarus over to, so I can suck on his finger and get some water in my mouth. Thirst and gnashing of teeth, yes. that'll be so thirsty. So they're already thirsty and can't get a drink. It's just so bad. It's just so <laughs> bad. just don't want to go there. You know, I, too bad more people didn't realize that. Isn't that <laughs> sad? You know what's interesting? I was watching Channel 5, and on Channel 5, Franklin Graham came out. Now he's on Channel 5 with a message of salvation. And I thought, amen to that, because I was like, Channel 5? Oh, it's a message, too. A message of salvation. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, plainness could be nothing mm -hmm. else, but yeah. 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 Okay, so go under on your first page. It says, by whom and for what? We're talking about eternal judgment. Okay, eternal judgment by whom and eternal judgment for what? Man will be judged by the man. Acts 17.31 says, for he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. Who has been appointed to judge? Jesus. Jesus will judge. Okay? He will sit on the great white throne, which is called his judgment seat of Christ, and he will judge. Let's look these scriptures up. Matthew 7, 21, so that you know I'm not just saying this. I want you to see it out of the word, not from me. The word trumps everything. Okay, so we're in Matthew 7, starting at 21. And we're just pretty much, with the exception of 2 Corinthians, we're going to stay in Matthew for a few minutes. Okay, Matthew 7. Twenty-one. Okay. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who, so there's the exception, actually what? Do. Do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. In other words, you can sit all day long and say, I believe in Jesus. Well, the devil, I mean, the demons believe, right? But they don't do the will of God, nor can they be redeemed. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast demons and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws, which means you're lawless. 
which means you were independent. That's what lawlessness is. It's, it's independence rather than dependence upon God. That was what Adam did in the Garden of Eden and Eve. They, they didn't depend on God. They acted independently, which is lawless because they went against the word of God. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a serious thing to say you're a believer and to not live faithfully. Oh, I have faith. Yes, but are you faithful? What's the difference between faith and faithful? Mm -hmm. One is a mental understanding. Faithful is actually obeying and doing. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the Hebrew writing of the Old Testament never really uses the word faith. Mm. What, are the, what does the Hebrew writers use? Faithfulness. What does that mean? Doing. Okay? Big difference. Okay? So that's that. Let's go to chapter 13. A couple pages over. Chapter 13, verse 40. Now here is a parable. Jesus is speaking in parables. In other words, it's a story with a meaning. And he says at this point in the parable, verse 40, just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will remove from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angels will what? Throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be, there it is, that's what I was looking for, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Two emotions combined. Weeping is sorrow, gnashing of teeth is anger. Two terrible emotions. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Mm. That's heavy. You see all these warnings, mm -hmm. warnings, warnings? This is, this is what we as believers need to be hearing constantly to keep safe, okay? All right, let's go to chapter 25 of Matthew and verse 31. <laughs> but when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. So if you want to be on the right, remember that. Right hand, right hand, right hand. <laughs> then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father and inherit the kingdom, prepare for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Okay, we didn't really need to go that far. But anyways, the one on his right are going to be the sheep. And that's who uh, Jesus is. He's a shepherd of his sheep. We don't want to be goats. Okay? So there'll be a separation taking place. Okay? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.10. So go to your right. 2 Corinthians 5.10. And it says, for me must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil that we have done in this earthly body. Wait, that's 510? Uh-huh. 2 Corinthians oh. 510. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil that we have done in what? In this earthly body. Remember what I said at the beginning of the lesson? There are two appearances on earth for every single human being. The first is to arrive and do God's will. The second is to give an account as to whether we did God's will. Okay, so this life is probation. It's determining our eternity. Okay, all right. Now, Jesus is going to be the one to judge. Let's talk about his qualifications to be the judge. Right there, look at what um, on the first page. Jesus' dual nature qualifies him uh, to apply perfect ju justice. Why? Well, because in his humanity, because he humbled himself and became human, he is understanding. He totally gets what it's like to live in our circumstances. 
He understands pressures of temptations, and yet he lived without sin. Well, thank God for that part. Right? Yes. Amen. Okay, and then what he did is he gave us the ability because of what he did on the cross, right? Paying the price for our sin and then going back to heaven so that he could pour out his Holy Spirit inside of us so that we would have the power to overcome temptation, pressures, and sin. He's what more could he do for man, right? Okay, so in his humanity, he's qualified, but look at his divinity. He has all knowledge. He knows us totally, our secret sins, our careless words, and our hidden motives. As God, he's omniscient. So that is what qualifies him to be the perfect judge. He will take, and now here's into your answer, Sam, a little bit. He will take into account our knowledge or ignorance of what is right and wrong in God's sight. We shall be judged according to the light we have received, whether the full light of the gospel, the half light of the Ten Commandments, or a lesser light shining through the creation and our inward conscience. In other words, he takes into consideration every single human being, from the ones that have been gifted with the highest amount of intelligence to the ones that have been born with a very low amount of intelligence. He will take into perfect consideration. We can trust him. Oh, maybe. That's good. <laughs> or maybe the person in the world too. Absolutely, yeah. as well as the light given. Americans are going to have a hard time justifying anything, trying. Nobody can justify anything. But they're going to have less ability to be able to think that they could say anything because we've been um, founded as a Christian nation upon godly principles. We have so many Bibles and so many different translations, right? We've, mm -hmm. we've had so much that has been preached, and there have been so many churches that used to do it right, and look what has happened. And How they, we have let yeah. it go. And, and there, guess what? I'm sorry, it's the church's fault. Go ahead, Steve. And there they are, all those Bibles sitting on the shelves waiting to be bought. That's right. And sitting on our tables That's waiting right. for us Way to, to read. Way too expensive. Right. We still need to watch Bible. <laughs> I know, right? Goodness. Yeah. And all we need really is one. That's all we need is really one, you know? We don't need yeah, to have more. Amazon, like 16 bucks. Well, okay, really? there you go. Wow. Okay. okay. All right, let's go on. Um, oh, by the way, Romans 1, 20 and Romans 2, 12 through 16. Uh, I have the scripture. I'm not going to go there with you now, but you can read that later to give uh, justification to that uh, prior paragraph. Remember, guys, to whom much is given, much is required. That's what the Word of God says, which also means that sins committed are also um, are are equivalent to things not done. Omission is as guilty as commission. It's not just about sins that you've committed. It's the things you should have done that you didn't do. That's sin also, okay? Remember, when you're repenting, you have to, you have to think, oh, Lord, what, where did I fail you? Where did I not speak out? Where did I not do something? Would you have mercy on me for that? Mm -hmm. And help me to be more sensitive to do those things and to, to be led by your spirit. Yeah, Julie. So um, if we became a Christian and we sin after we... Which we do, all of yes. us. Mm -hmm. um, let's say we don't repent, or we don't renounce, okay. or, or we don't notice yep. it, yep. or whatever. We're going to be judged on that, but That's is right. that like eternal judgment? Could or, be, or, and we're going to get into that. That could okay. be. You're going into a very good area. I promise I'm coming to that. Okay. okay? So our entire life will be exposed, every thought, word, and deed, everything that we have done in the body. It has all been recorded in books that will be opened on that day. So I encourage you to go back and read those scriptures. Okay, now the verdict is guilty. Who has always done what they knew to be right, even if only guided by their conscience? Romans chapter 3 says all have sinned and come short of the glory <coughs> of God. None of us have been what God meant us to be. Therefore, because no human has ever done it right, the sentence is, I don't know if I have this in your uh, copy, but it's, I said living death, and I, that's an oxymoron, <coughs> living death, but it, it's, it's conscious death, continual conscious death, okay, in a place called hell, forever shut out of the new heaven and the new earth, forever shut in with the devil and all of his demons. That is what it will be, okay? 
These are the facts. These facts hurt, but Ecclesiastes 12, 11 says the words of the wise are like a cattle prod. They're painful, but helpful. And that's why we have to learn this stuff. It's painful here, but it's going to only be helpful for us, okay? Now, here's the big question. Follow along with me. Will all, all of mankind be condemned in that court? And the answer is no, because another book was opened which is the book of life. We read that at the beginning today in Revelation 20, verse 12. And everyone listed in that book will be acquitted, escaping the verdict of death. And that book is called the Lamb's Book of Life. Do you get that? Yeah. How did they qualify? They trusted in Christ as their Savior, and they lived by faithfulness. Do I have that in your, or do I say by faith? faith? Okay, put in faithfulness. It shouldn't be lived by faith. I want it to, the, the Hebrew thought was when you use the word faith, they understood it was faithfulness. They trusted and obeyed, or in other words, they trusted and did God's words. Thus their deeds were evidence of their faithfulness. Do you see what I'm saying? It would be like your child, and you say, go clean your room to your child, and that child says to you, okay, mommy, I will do that, but then never, ever does it. Did the child obey? No. Nope. No, but he agreed with you. Yeah. Right? It, that's what we call passive, um, um, is it passive-aggressive? That's passive-aggressive attitude. When a child will look at you and agree with you, but inside, they're standing up saying, but I'm not going to actually do it. And that's the spirit today. I wasn't, there wasn't nearly a, a passive aggressive nature. Wasn't a, I shouldn't say it wasn't around when I was a kid. I shouldn't say that because it was. Rebellion has always been here, okay? But I've noticed, you know, as the older I get, I'm just seeing so much more of a different method mm -hmm. or a mode, especially yeah. out of young people, that they're just real passive. But there is this inner aggressiveness that says, I'm not doing it, mm -hmm. you know? And um, there was more of a, um, there was a, a more of a softening toward authority when I was a child in this country. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the difference? The church, the church. It always goes back to the church. You can't expect the world to repent if the church is not repenting. The church has to repent before the world can repent, okay? All right, so um, that's, that's that spiel. Okay, now. Not a single step of believing in Jesus, but rather the essence of going on believing, whatever happens. The Old Testament heroes of faith were, as Hebrews 11 says, were still living by faith when they died. In other words, not believing in Jesus, but they were living a life of faithfulness when they died. That should, if, if we die before Jesus returns, everybody in this room ends up, you know, coming to the end of their life, whatever that may be, before Jesus returns, we should be dying as believers the same way the Old Testament saints died, living by faithfulness, right? Okay, now, will believers, here's a real, put a star next to this question, because this is where the crux, that I, I have so many questions. Will believers be judged for every, every sin that they've ever committed? No. We will only be judged for the sins for which we have not repented of. Do you see that? Let's go to 1 John 1.9. 1 John is almost to the end of your Bible. Very important concept here that is not being taught enough. Yes. Can you say... Can you say that you know right now that you're going to go to heaven? Yes, I have an assurance fact. today. I, and we can walk, that's a great question. We can walk as believers with assurance, but that's why I'm teaching you these foundation stones, to lay them in your lives, because there is a particular lifestyle that we have to be to living. Live, to live, That's right. right. Okay? okay? That's why it says okay. in the Old Testament, in Lamentations, your mercies are new every morning. Do you make awaited to receive those mercies. I just said tonight, when I, or today when I prayed, we come before the throne of grace to receive mercy. We need it, right? I, there's days I have to go to the throne of God a million times, it seems like, because I just keep messing up, and it's available. It's not intentional. You know, there's a difference about that. And in right. Foundations 2, we're really going to get into that intentionality versus unintentional, which is another concept that's not being taught enough in the church. But anyways, let's read 1 John uh, 
1, chapter 1, verse 9. It says, but if we confess our sins to him, he's talking to believers right now, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from what? Oh, All my. wickedness. Sin is wickedness. So he not only will forgive us if we, what? confess do you see that do you see all the conditions on this thing mm -hmm. if we confess our sins so confession first lord i fell short i did wrong will you forgive me keep reading he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins but it doesn't stop there notice and to cleanse us from all wickedness in other words Yes, I did mess up, and I do confess it. I do need forgiveness of this thing. It is wickedness. I hate it. I want to be rid of it in my life. Will you give me the power to get rid of this thing in my life? Do you see that? Okay, good. Let's also look at 1 Timothy. Go back to the left. Um, 1 Timothy 5. You have to actually say your sins, though. You can't just pray and say, yeah, forgive me. My, you, you can, but I, yeah, let's get serious with our sins. You have a certain set of problems. I have a certain set of problems, right? Because of our iniquities and because of what we do. They're not necessarily the same. And I need to get busy with the Holy Spirit going after not just the fruit of my sin. I want to get rid of the root of my sin. As long as the root remains, I'm right. going to keep producing fruit. Right. right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Do you name them all? Well, you know what? Um, again, I don't want to. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's going to guide you and put on your heart where you know. I mean, there's some things that you just don't have to even need the Holy Spirit. You just know, man, you know, I, I know. And Lord, I just really want to get, you know, I, I want to get on top of this thing. This is a root in my life that I've just, God, would you continue? Thank you for your patience. And, and all you can do is you can't think about one day when you're going to be without it, but rather it's a daily living and being willing to partner with the Holy Spirit to give you power. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to, you're going to crash and burn. I do. You do. We all do. You know, but he's, he's, he, remember in all of this, I, I'm, 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 I'm presenting the one side of the seriousness of sin and, and shipwrecking your faith and not being with him forever. But I want to balance it out with he is for you. He is not against you. Mm -hmm. Jesus is for us. He mm -hmm. is striving with us. He is helping us. He wants us. What the devil is telling you is you, you just screwed up again. Don't you dare. You can't go to the throne of the Lord. Don't believe that lie from the pit of hell. Go a million times a day. Go a bazillion times a day if you need it. You know? Mm -hmm. that's It's available to us, okay? And you can tell them I've got such a problem. I've got an addiction. We all have addictions. <clears throat> Every single one of us have addictions to some sort of wickedness and lawlessness in our life. And it, we're just working through it. Okay, my parents are 91 years old and, and very lucid and living independently. They are not yet, they've been living a whole life, their whole life oh, um, in obedience and by faith. That doesn't mean they're sinless, it doesn't mean they haven't made mistakes, and it doesn't mean that because they're 91 they've arrived and now they're just waiting. God is still working stuff out in their life, and He will with all of us until the very end. Okay, that's His mercy. All right, uh, 1 Timothy 5 24. It says, remember, the sins of some people are obvious, leading them to certain judgment. But there are others whose sins will not be revealed until later. Okay, do you understand that? Mm -hmm. You know, there's some people that it's just, you, okay, look at, look at what's going on in the world. And you can turn the TV on, you can turn the news on, and you can say, well, there's obvious wickedness, there's obvious lawlessness, there's obvious sin, right? And then there's other people you look at, and it doesn't seem like this, it's not nearly as odd, like there doesn't seem to be wickedness or lawlessness. But you know what? There might be, and it's going to be revealed later, okay? That's why we got to be serious and humble ourselves and say, this is in me. This is in my family. I recognize where it comes from. I see it. I can trail it back. I have a proclivity to this, and I see the fruit of it in my own life. Lord, I hate it. I want to partner with your Holy Spirit, and I know it's probably going to take the rest of my life. That's not an excuse to keep doing it, but 
help. You know what I was just talking about is my husband and I were talking about this the other day, each of our different iniquities. And, you know, he was a little discouraged about some things going on in his life. And I said, you know, I said, babe, I feel the same way about the issues in my life. You've got to start by just praying to hate it. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. Because we all love our sin. you got to first hate it. Lord, I, I admit it's wrong, but here's the fact. I love it. <laughs> and, and, and Stephen preached on that on Sunday. Do you That's remember right. that part? I was like, awesome. oh. Yeah, he did so good. <laughs> he and really did. you got to start there. You don't think the Lord loves that? He loves that. I don't even hate it yet. I know I should hate it, but I don't. Will you start breathing on me, Holy Spirit, to see it as repulsive? To see it the way you see it? Because not until I start feeling that and seeing that, and Ezekiel prophesied that, I'm going to breathe my new, my spirit into you so that you're going to want to do what's right. You're going to hate what's wrong. And those things are going to get worked out, okay? It's a heart issue that I'm talking about here. And it's hard to teach a heart issue because it's black and white. It's, it seems to be very objective, but this is a subjective thing, okay? All right. Is it possible, here's a really good one also, is it possible to depart from the faith? So we're in 1 Timothy. I want you to go to chapter 1 of this same book. This has been taught so wrong in this country especially. Once saved, always saved. Yeah, I call it OSAS. Once saved, always saved. Oh, that's what I've been studying. Uh-huh. And I'm going to tell you something. This is a lie from the pit of hell. Mm. What is this? Osas is a lie for a pit of hell. But you say initially it. said, Jesus come in my heart, forgive me of my sins, and you are walking with the Lord. And then something happens. You are being when saved. You are being saved. saved. You are not saved. Okay. That is past tense. You are, we are being saved. Uh, what is it? 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians 1 18. We are being saved. Osas is a lie. From the pit of hell. From the pit of hell. Get rid of it. Mm -hmm. I wrote it down somewhere. Oh, like uh huh. Osas. Say it. Mm -hmm. Osas. Like it was Osas. Osas. What does Osas mean? Once saved, always saved. Uh huh. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And here's the scripture to prove it right here. Ready? Let's read it. 1 Timothy 1 19. Cling okay. to your what? Faith in Christ. 1 Timothy 1 19. See, having faith in Jesus. Cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. That, that right there explicitly is saying you got work to do in this faith walk, right? For some people have deliberately, boy, is that a heavy word? We're going to get into that big time in Foundations 2. Have deliberately violated their consciences. And as a result, what's the result? Here it is. The faith has been what? Shipwreck. Shipwreck. Then he gave an example. Hymenius and Alexander are two examples. I threw them out and handed them over to Satan so they might not learn to blaspheme God. Wow. Heavy. Listen, our <coughs> faith can be shipwrecked. I'm going to have to be careful until the very, my last breath when I'm with Jesus. When you're with Jesus, you can sit back and go, probation's over. That's what probation is. Do you know when you look up in the Webster's Dictionary, probation, it's a, it's a testing period. It's a trial period. That is what this is. We've got to be very careful. It's only 70-some years. you got some time yet. I've only probably got 20 or 25 more years, maybe 30. Can I read the notes on 19, on 119 that you sure, just read? Yeah, this yeah, is out of the NLT life application. Yeah, I was reading that too. Right? Yeah. How can you keep your conscience clear? Treasure your faith in Christ more than anything else and do what you know is right. Each time you deliberately ignore your conscience, you are hardening your heart. Eventually, your capacity to tell right from wrong will diminish. That's right. As you walk with God, he will speak to you through your conscience, yep. letting you know the difference between right and wrong and when you are making a bad choice. Right. Be sure to act on those inner tugs mm -hmm. so that you do what is right. right. Then your conscience will remain Amen. clear. Amen. Yeah, that is exactly right. Listen, um, that that is so so true. I can't believe how many young people, and I'm going to say 30 and under right now, who've been raised in the church, who I talk to about sin that they're living in, mm -hmm. and you know what they're saying? Well, I can just ask forgiveness for the Lord. That's intentional, deliberate sin. In other words, they're living a lifestyle of sin. They're claiming to be believers. I'm going to shock you right now. Most of 
the people in the church of America today are sitting in church, they are believing in Jesus, and their understanding of the cross of Jesus is that even if they do something wrong, they can just ask for forgiveness, but they can continue in that sin. That is deliberate sin. Mm -hmm. That is deliberate. And it right there says, you cannot violate deliberately. That's why we gotta wake up and we gotta say, oh, thank you, your mercies are new every day. Would you fill me with your power, your Holy Spirit? I don't want to sin today. You probably will, but not deliberately. I am not going to live with this man anymore. It is sin. Yeah. It's not about, well, I had sex with him, and so, okay, well, I'll just ask Jesus to forgive me. And, oh, yeah, we're going on a date, you know, on Valentine's, and I'm going to have sex again. That's not the picture. That's going to be the trick when he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. But I prayed in your name and I prophesied in your name. What do you mean? And this is a lack of teaching in the church. God you is were just you. talking about not giving up your addiction. You were saying everybody has an addiction. Right, called sin and wickedness and lawlessness. But we've got to get busy. At, God is not just shedding his blood for our sins to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He ascended back to the Father to pour out his Holy Spirit to give us the power to overcome sin. <clears throat> We've got new insides. We got old outsides. We got that old dead body hanging on us, but we got brand new insides. That's why Paul says, I do the things I don't want to do. He said this after becoming a believer in Christ Jesus, and I don't do the things I want to do. That means he struggled too. As strong of a believer as he was, he couldn't believe it. You know what that means? That means at the end of some of Paul's days, he sat down and he went, I can't believe I just did that. I know better. But then he went on and said there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus because there's an advocate that we have, Jesus. But then there's also a power. That, how, what, what's a major thing that he said there about getting over those addictions? It's what you think on. It's what you think on. Let's start thinking on the things that are pure and clean and right and pray desperately that the Lord would breathe upon us differently for each of our weaknesses and say, Lord, I don't even hate this thing yet. Will you? You telling me the Lord's not going to answer that prayer? Let me tell you what. He loves that. He's for you. He's not against you. It's just that we want to live in our sin and we also want to be with Jesus one day because we don't want to be here or we don't want to be in a lake of fire. The fact of the matter is the church today wants to be happy now and holy later. But that is not what the scripture teaches us. It's holy now and we'll have all the happiness that we want later. Yeah, we have to live right on Right, the today. exactly. And this is what most, and that's why I can't believe I'm talking to a lot of 40 and under and they're in all sincerity. I, I'm going to even say that. Truly, in all sincerity, they're going, well, I just can ask forgiveness for it. And, I said, and they'll go back and sleep with her again? Well, yeah. Because <laughs> isn't that what Jesus did for me? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. They're under this understanding that, they, that they have, they, they've got a solution for their sin. Listen, deliberate sin is so incredibly serious. So incredibly serious. Back in the law, age of the law, with Moses, when God set up the system of how to worship him, what did they do? They shed blood of a what? Lamb. Of, an, of a lamb when they sinned, right? Right. You want to know, want to know something? Hmm. If there were certain sins, they couldn't even go get a lamb and shed the blood. Hmm. Deliberate sin under this age, you took them out back and you stoned them. Hmm. That's right. Adultery was one of those things, or fornication was one of those things, or murder, certain types of murder, not manslaughter, not in an accident, but, you know, murder, intentional murder. There wasn't like, well, all right, I better go to the, I'll get my best lamb, ever, ever, ever. Well, the best was only for the Lord, and I'll go shed the blood and, and of this lamb, and I'll be covered. Yeah, totally. Uh-huh. That, no, 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 no. Listen, all of the sacrificial blood of the animals over on this side of the cross was for unintentional sin. It was never for deliberate sin. That is the picture of what this is. It's not a license to sin, and that is what the church has allowed it to become. In the Catholic Church, you can be like 
we go. We can Kendall, Mary, well, yeah. good yeah. to go. <laughs> Glory be you. So, yeah. But I, I, I have to read the scripture in Hebrews. Right. I know we're, we're running out of time. I know, but, Hebrews is, but I mean, every, every, every Hebrews time you talk about this, too. because just, so, so this is Hebrews 10, 26, and it says, Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning That's after true. we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God. And this is the best part. And have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. And then as I was reading the notes about it, I mean, so, so, so. I'm going to do Hebrews. <clears throat> that's part of Foundations 2 that I'm going to get into all of that. So this isn't just about rejecting our Savior. That was talking to believers. Right. Well, and then it was, so as you're talking about, you know, when animals used to be slaughtered to atone for our sins. And then Jesus came to, to atone, atone for our sins. Mm -hmm. And then we can treat the that blood as if it's just common and unholy. Mm -hmm. And even God didn't allow under the age of law, under Moses, for the animals to be treat, treated, even though their blood was common and it wasn't the right kind of blood. It never cleansed or atoned for them. All it did was cover oh, their much. sins. And he didn't even allow innocent animal blood to be treated like that. He goes, you're not gonna sacrifice one of my creatures for deliberate sin. If you deliberately sin, then you are going to be stoned or whatever the, the thing was. Sorry, what happened. I have a quick question. So that may not exempt us from heaven. However, in on judgment day, if we're still acting out with intentional sin, we'll be judged. And that's why I, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave today without saying this. I know we didn't get through it, but listen, I am stirring up a holy fear in each of you. This is what we need to do in the church. This is what you are called to do with others out for both uh, uh, believers, and then how you are to uh, not offer the the, the, the gospel is not an offer of love; it's an offer of righteousness. But listen, guys, for you guys. This is why it's so important to keep a short debt with God. We approach the throne often. What is, what, how, the disciples came to Jesus and said, would you teach us how to pray? We've never heard prayers like this. This is incredible. And what did he say? When you pray, say, our Father, let's say it, who art in heaven, holy is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So now we pray his kingdom to come. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. There it is. See, that's repentant. That's what Jesus says. Every time you pray, say this. Forgive us. He was teaching us. Keep a short list, please. That's not, thank you for the license to sin. And so, you know, can, can you do it? No, it's not that. Right? And help us to forgive others and so forth and so on, okay? And so that's why I'm saying, listen, it is possible to depart from the faith. There is no such thing as once saved, always saved. I'm good now. I got my insurance card in my back pocket. I'm going to heaven. No. It is po I'm going to finish this one section. It is possible for the names in the book of life to be blotted out. God made it clear to Moses, and God made it clear to his church. And I'm going to do two scriptures. We're going to end. Go to Exodus 32, 33. This is under the people of faith before Jesus. Exodus 32, 33. Let's start in... Uh, let's start in verse 30. Moses intercedes for Israel. The next day Moses said to the people, You have committed a terrible sin, but I will go back up to the Lord on the mountain. Perhaps I will be able to obtain forgiveness for your sin. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, what a terrible sin these people have committed. They have made gods of gold for themselves. Ooh, idolatry. But now if you will only forgive their sin, but if not, erase my name from the record that you have written. But the Lord replied to Moses, and by the way, I don't know how Moses said that. But, but the Lord replied to Moses, no, I will erase the name of everyone who has sinned 
against me. Now go, lead the people to the place I told you about. Look, my angel will lead the way before you. Okay? And uh, when I come to call the people to account, I will certainly hold them responsible for what? For their sins. Now that was what was said to the people of God before Jesus. Say, wow, well, Jesus came in. It's all different. Right. Okay? No. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3. Verse 5. Start with verse 4. This is a letter to one of the churches. We're going to get into this. This is our last lesson, and we'll get into all of this, okay, for Foundations 1. And it says, Yet there are some in the church in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes with evil. They will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. So that means some in the church have not soiled their clothes. Others in the church have soiled their clothes, right? All right. Notice this now. All, there's the word all, and then here's the exception, who. All who are victorious will be clothed in white. I will what? Never. Never erase their names from the book of life. But I will announce before my father and his angels that they are mine. What does that imply? That he will erase the names of some who aren't clothed in white and who are not victorious. Do you see that? So that's what's not saved all. We, that's how you That's can... exactly right. That's why you can't say, well, I just believe in Calvinism and ref I'm a reformer and, you know, it doesn't matter. The Lord's got me. He's got to do his work in me. And, and while he's doing his work in me and he's got me, I can just keep living like this because I can't do anything. That's bull. It's from the pit of hell. And there are so many believers today who but, are living but also under that. those that are teaching it and enforcing it <clears throat> will be accountable for those. Oh man, that. yes. Oh man, yes. For sure. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, 